Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. Today we're going to be taking a look inside Ethereum transactions and talking a bit about how they differ from transactions on UTXO based blockchains like Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. So first, let's take a look at the difference between UTXO based blockchains and account based blockchains. With currencies like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin, transactions output uh, outputs called UTXOs, or unspent transaction outputs. These behave very similar to dollar bills in a fiat currency. So you have an output that you can spend, and you have to consume it in its entirety when forming a new transaction. So if you hand a cashier a $10 bill and you only need to spend $9, uh, they'll give you back a dollar and change. On these blockchains, if you have a UTXO worth, uh, let's say, one Bitcoin and you only want to spend uh, half a Bitcoin, you have to spend that whole Bitcoin UTXO and give your wallet back some change in the transaction. Currencies like Ethereum behave uh, more similar to a traditional bank account. So Ethereum addresses act as accounts, and what these do is they store the difference in state over time of the account balance. So every time there's a transaction, the address state changes, which is like a withdrawal or a deposit, depending on if you're sending or receiving Ethereum from your address. So now let's talk a little bit more about the types of accounts and transactions that occur on the Ethereum blockchain. First off, there's two types of Ethereum accounts. The first is the one that we're going to be dealing with when we're talking about transactions between two individuals or two parties on the network. These are externally owned accounts. So this is the type of account you have uh, generally if you set up an Ethereum wallet and send currency to and from uh, that account. There's also contract owned addresses and these addresses are entirely controlled by smart contract code that's deployed on the Ethereum network. So in terms of the type of transactions, the first type of transaction is a transfer of funds between two externally owned accounts. Again, this is the type of transaction we're going to be talking about today. And this is the type of transaction you're doing if you send another person Ether or if you send yourself Ether from an exchange, for example. There's also contract message transactions. These type of transactions are used to kick off some contract code for a smart contract that's already deployed on the network. You send that smart contract uh, some funds as well as a message in that transaction, and that tells the smart contract code to execute. And so the new state of that contract is now saved on the Ethereum blockchain when the block is processed. And finally, there are transactions that actually initialize smart contracts on the network. So you uh, create a transaction where you actually deploy the uh, Ethereum smart contract code uh, that you want to run from future message transactions. Again, we're taking a look at externally owned account transfers. So now let's talk about the specifics of what goes on inside an Ethereum transaction. We're going to talk about the different bits of data that are involved in a transaction and discuss what each of those pieces means and what it's used for. So the first thing that you might see if you look at an Ethereum transaction on a block explorer like at blockchain.info is you're going to see a transaction ID. And this is a unique hash of some data that's contained in the transaction. And it's used to uniquely identify that transaction on the blockchain. Next, you have a total, which is the total amount of Ether transacted uh, when the transaction is processed in a block. So that includes the actual funds that the receiver will get. That includes the fees as well. Next, you have the fees, which is the Ether paid to the miner that finds the block solution and processes uh, that new block on the blockchain. Third is a concept that's a little bit more unique to Ethereum because you don't see this on uh, just currency-based blockchains like uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. So gas is a unit cost of each computation required to actually execute a transaction. So gas is used to do the computation when you send funds to another individual with an externally owned account. 
transaction. And gas is also used uh, mostly for smart contracts. So when you deploy smart contract code in order to prevent people from just overloading the network with things like infinite loops, there's a limit set on how many computations your contract is allowed to use, and that's called gas. Next is the gas price, which is the amount of uh, ether spent for each unit of gas used to do the computation. We have a from, which is the account sending the ether in the transaction, and that behaves much like a withdrawal on the bank account. So when this block with this transaction is processed, the state of the sending account will change to have a reduced ether balance. The to address is the account receiving the ether in the transaction. So again, we're generally talking about externally owned account transfers. So you have someone else's address receiving this, but this from could also be the address of a smart contract. And this behaves uh, similar to a deposit when you're talking about a bank account. So again, when this block is processed and the transaction is included, the account balance of the receiver will go up. Finally, there's a nonce. And what this nonce value is, is it's a simple counter that increments every time the sending address sends funds. This is used to prevent double spend attacks on the network. So when you actually think about it, Ethereum and account-based blockchain transactions are a little bit simpler to understand uh, than UTXO-based blockchains like uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, or Litecoin. So it's just a different model, it's a different way of storing state on the network. Uh, things are complicated a little bit by the fact that Ethereum is also a distributed computing platform, and so you have these concepts of contract-owned accounts. But in general, an account-based system is fairly intuitive to understand. So if you'd like to do some further reading on this, this tutorial is, as always, available as a written article on the Chain Tutorials website. Thank you very much for listening to this tutorial, and tune back for more soon.